Hello again, friends, and welcome to this week's webcast. Speaking this week is Dustin Roberts. He gives an inspiring message on how God brings us to covenant with him by leading us to seasons of trial and showing himself to be faithful in all situations. We hope this message blesses and inspires you. If you would like to partner with us and support our ministry and outreach, head over to www.lionofjudatoledo.org and click the donate button. Once again, thank you for joining us on our webcast. Have a blessed day and shalom. Shalom, Ahuvim. Shalom, beloved one. One of my favorite scriptures is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse number 11. I'm going to take two episodes to do this, so join me next week as well. Listen to the word of God here. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that indwells you. I want to, first of all, focus on the first part of this scripture. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Now, to have the spirit that raised Yeshua from the dead dwelling in you, this is our inheritance. Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians that we've received the Ruach HaKadosh as a pledge of our inheritance. So if you're born again, if you have received Jesus, you have literally become a partaker of the resurrection spirit of divine life. The spirit that raised Yeshua HaMashiach from the dead. The spirit, beloved one, that raised Jesus of Nazareth from the dead lives in you. It's a reality. The spirit that lifted Yeshua off the ground so that the disciples literally saw him ascend into the air in the book of Acts and disappear into the clouds, that spirit that lifted him up, beloved one, lives in you and in me. We need to get a hold of this. When you look in the mirror, you're more than what you see in the mirror. You have resurrected, victorious life living inside of you. And God wants to teach us to cling to him that we would live by this spirit. And so today I want to simply leave you with an exclamation mark on the first part of this verse. You have abundant life. Jesus is in you. And I want to encourage you today to ask the Father, to ask the Holy Spirit to open up the windows of understanding for you that you would perceive this reality. Until next week, beloved, this is Rabbi Schneider saying shalom alechem, peace to you. And the Holy Spirit may encourage you to pass this devotional onto a friend. God bless you and shalom. Well, if you were here last week, we talked about the time in between Passover and Pentecost. We talked about a special season that we're in where God is courting us and meeting us in a special way to build trust, to build a season where God can lead us into the fullness of his covenant. How many of you were here last week and heard that message? Who didn't hear that message? Anybody not hear that message? Go watch it on YouTube. You need to watch it. Like Matthew said, it's really powerful. And I think there's some amazing stuff in there. There's unique stuff that, that the Lord showed me that I, in my whole walk with the Lord, I felt like there were some things that the Lord was showing me that I had never seen before. So I want to encourage you to go check that out if you get an opportunity to. But we're in that season right now. How many of you know we had Passover a couple weeks ago? A few more than a couple weeks ago at this point. And Pentecost is on its way. And right now, we're in a season in between Passover and Pentecost. And I believe that the Lord does a special thing during this season. And one of the things I said last week is that this is like an engagement period. This is a period before the consummation of the covenant at Pentecost when the word was given on Sinai or the Holy Spirit was released from heaven to be written on tablets of stone or on our fleshly hearts, right? This is the period in between. And Jesus, 
actually did some special things during this season. We're going to jump right into that in just a second. But God did some special things during this season too in the Old Testament. And he commanded us during this season to count 50 days. And if you were here last week, I told you how many of you have been counting each day. Right? Very few of us are counting each day. We're not actually thinking about this season as much. We celebrate Passover and we celebrate Pentecost, but in between, we just go about our normal business. And we're not recognizing, perhaps, what it is that God wants to do in this season. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to go to Acts chapter 1, verse 1. And it says, the first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering. Okay, Passover, his suffering. What did Jesus do after his suffering? He presented himself to those whom he had chosen. Somebody say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Listen, in this season, God wants to present himself to you. Amen. By many convincing proofs. Somebody say convincing proofs. Convincing proofs. Appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. So what happens in this season? In between Passover and Pentecost, Jesus is appearing to those whom he has chosen and he's convincing them of who he is, speaking to them of God's kingdom, showing them what it means to be in covenant and in relationship with the kingdom of God. Not the relationship of the world. No longer the relationship of Egypt. But coming into a covenant with God Almighty. And what it means to be a called out people. What it means to be blessed and have his banner over you. What it means to be a part of his kingdom and a holy nation called out special among all the peoples of the earth. You can be seated. And today I want to go to the Old Testament. I want to talk about some of the things that God did in this season, in between Passover and in between Pentecost, so we can see some of the areas that God wants to give us what I call convincing proofs so that we can trust him. An engagement period is about trust. An engagement period is a time where God is building trust so that when you sign on the dotted line, when the engagement is consummated, when you go to the next level and you become married and you enter into covenant with God, you can walk with Him instead of Him leaving and just going on without you. You know, you remember, you remember Rabbi teaches all the time in the Song of so, uh, uh, the Song of Songs. Let me get that right. The Song of Songs, and uh, Rabbi would correct me if I said Song of Solomon. <laughs> the Song of Songs, even though Solomon wrote it, we got it's the Song of Songs because it's a love letter between the church and and uh, Jesus. Amen. And anyways, the point is. Remember, he says, come with me up the mountain. And the woman says, no, 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 I'm going to stay here where it's comfortable. And she doesn't go. And, there's a, and, and Rabbi always teaches, there's a break in the relationship when that happens. There's a strain 
in the relationship because why? They're, she doesn't fully have that trust that she needs yet. They're not fully there where they can walk together. But the whole point is he wants to bring her up the mountain so they can go to the next level together. Because God doesn't just want to lead you in the wilderness after he brings you out of Egypt. God wants to take you into the promised land. But if you don't trust God and if you aren't convinced that he is who he says he is and you don't know that he's faithful, that he's a provider, that he's a healer, that he's your banner, that God can completely cover you and take you, that he'll fight for you and he'll also fight with you. If you don't know these things, you're going to be stuck dwelling in the desert for 40 years after the promise instead of going into the promised land. You understand? It's important this engagement season that we learn to trust the God that we're connected to. One of the first things that happened after God brought Israel out of Egypt in this season, in between Passover and Pentecost, was God gave Israel supernatural guidance. The Bible says in Exodus 13, verse 21, the Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way and a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they may travel by day and by night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. When God is leading us, church, He doesn't leave us. He gives us supernatural guidance in every season. During the daytime and even in the night seasons. You can always count on God to be there when you look for Him. The only way that you're not going to see that cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night is if you refuse to look for God and you close your eyes. God is showing you that He's going to lead you. Moses cried out to God and he said, Oh God, if you don't go with us, just leave us here to die. I don't want to go unless you go with me. God was showing Israel Look, I got you. I can lead you. You don't have to worry. I'm not just here in the day. I'm also here in the night. I'm not just here for the good times. I'm here for the night seasons of your life too. I'll lead you when it's good. And I'll lead you when it's bad. He is a good shepherd. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He'll lead you up the mountain, he'll lead you down the mountain, he'll lead you on the plains, and he'll lead you through the valleys. Amen. He'll lead you to still and quiet waters because he's a good shepherd. Amen. Supernatural guidance is something that if we're going to live in covenant with God, we have to be able to trust that he's leading our lives. The next thing that God did is what I like to call planned encounters. Israel had been traveling through the desert and all of a sudden God speaks to Israel just a couple days after they've left Egypt and he says, hold up, turn around and go back and camp at a dead end. God told Israel to go camp up against the Red Sea. And they would be hemmed in, the Bible says, and blocked with nowhere to go. And God actually says, I'm going to use this for my glory. I'm going to completely take out the armies of Egypt. This is what's going to happen here. It's a planned encounter with your old enemy. And what happens is God takes them to the dead end. Pharaoh and the officials look and they say, Hey, look, Israel's just wandering out there, lost in the wilderness. See, they didn't know that Israel was following, following a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of fire. 
They couldn't see God. They didn't know what was going on. They just thought they were out there wandering around aimlessly. So they said, hey, let's go get our workers back. Everybody knows Pharaoh and Egypt, they got together, they got their chariots and their horses, and they raced after Israel. And in this planned encounter, the Lord began to prophesy and share what was going to happen. He said, I'm going to fight for you, and you are going to see my deliverance. So God basically speaks out and he says, hey, here's what's about to happen. Tell my people that I'm going to fight for them. One of the things that happens in an engagement period is that the Lord has planned encounter set up. How many of you guys, when you were engaged or dating, you planned some dates for that person you were with? You know what I mean? Planned encounters. God has planned encounters for his children. Sometimes, all of a sudden, God just shows up in our life. It's a planned encounter. You weren't doing anything. You weren't asking for it. But all of a sudden, it's just a planned encounter. Kind of like this morning. All of a sudden, there was just a planned encounter. I don't know where the anointing came from. I wasn't asking for that all of a sudden. All of a sudden, I just got hit with I don't know if you got hit with the anointing, but I got hit with the anointing. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah. Just a planned encounter. God said, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to fight for you. Listen to me. When we're in covenant and when you're engaged to God, you're not fighting by yourself. You understand? Yeah. He wants to show you that he's got your back. Sometimes you're going to do things with God. And sometimes God's like, no, I got this one. You just sit back and watch. Just sit back and watch me take out the enemy. Just sit back and watch. Listen, during this season, God wants to show you that he's got your back. That he can cover you. And so what happens when Egypt shows up? Supernatural protection. All of a sudden, this pillar of fire... Instead of leading Israel, it circles around and it comes between the enemy and Israel. Do you understand? God was saying, no, nope, you can't touch my people. He put this pillar of fire there and he kept it there until it was time to let the enemy through. Do you understand? God has a guard round about your life. God is guarding your life. And the enemy can't get through unless God decides to let them through. The Bible says that he is a good shepherd. You understand? That means he ain't taking naps. You know what I mean? That means he ain't asleep while the wolf is over there eating the sheep. Now, he's a good shepherd. He's not manipulating the sheep. He's not, not taking care of them. He's leading them. He's guarding them. He's making sure that one doesn't wander off and get eaten up by the enemy. God has supernatural protection over those whom he's chosen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember when I was younger... I was probably 21 or 22 years old. I remember sitting in an apartment, a small apartment, uh, very poor, <sighs> thinking, Lord, I've got this daughter, and I have, it was Ashlyn, my oldest daughter, thinking, Lord, like, how am I going to take care of this girl? What am I going to do? How can I provide for her? And the Lord took me to these verses in the New Testament where Jesus said, My father is the husbandman. I am the vine. I'm paraphrasing, okay? And you are the branches. And I remember Jesus saying, I and the father are one. 
I'm in the Father, the Father's in me, remain in me. And I remember just kind of catching this parable that Jesus was telling, and all of a sudden it just going from up here down on the inside of me, and faith was birthed in a supernatural way. I remember realizing that he was a good vineyard caretaker, that he wasn't a bad caretaker of his vineyard. And I realized that if I could just remain in him, if I would follow him, if I would keep my life centered in the vineyard and I didn't wander off, and I stayed connected to the vine like Jesus said, I knew that God would do whatever it took to take care of me as a branch. Amen. And all of a sudden, the fear left. All of a sudden, I was able to trust that he wouldn't let any foxes get into the vineyard unless he wanted that fox to get in. Unless it was for my good and for my benefit. Yes. You understand? Yes. God doesn't let the enemy in unless it's for your benefit. Now, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. You guys know about God letting the enemy in and facing Goliath, right? You know? All right. If you don't, that one's... Is that one on YouTube? That's probably on YouTube, too. Um... So what happens? Finally, God says, hey, what are you doing? Tell the people of Israel to go. I'm over here protecting them from the enemy. It's time to move. It says, take the staff, stretch it out over the Red Sea, and see what I do. And God, of course, parts the Red Sea, and Israel begins to pass through on dry ground. So God supernaturally makes a way for Israel to get out of a dead end. See, this is a planned encounter. Israel passes through, and then what happens? Finally, when Israel's passed through, God removes the pillar of fire to let the enemy come. See, God doesn't let the enemy in until he's ready to let the enemy in. Even the enemy had to ask permission to touch Job. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. The enemy doesn't have permission to touch you unless God allows it. Yes. If you can stay in the line, you're safe. Yes. Mm. This was a planned encounter. And let me just say something. Israel's on the other side. Egypt starts passing through with their big army to chase them down. And all of a sudden, of course, their wheels start getting stuck in the mud and they won't turn. All of a sudden, God begins fighting for Israel. And then Moses stretches back out the staff. And what happens? All the water covers up the armies of Egypt. See, at Passover, God took a first blow at your enemy. But in between Passover and Pentecost, there are some enemies that God's going to completely wipe out. They won't ever be able to chase you down ever again. Listen to me. There is a period and a time where you are destined for complete victory, where you don't have to face this trial anymore. That trial that plagued you, that put you in slavery, that thing that wanted to hold you down and hold you back and keep you from your promised land, there are some enemies that God wants to completely wipe out and destroy. And that's the season, church, that you're in right now. Do you have any enemies that you want God to completely wipe out? Just lift up your hands and ask Him and say, Hey, God, take out my enemy. I want you to fight for me. I need you to take out some enemies for me so I don't have to face them ever again. Listen, God wants to move you from glory to glory. Sometimes there are things He doesn't want you to ever have to face again. Amen. After Israel saw all the dead bodies of Egypt washed up on the shore, the Bible says, that they sang a song, and at the end of this song it says, And Israel feared the Lord, and they put their trust in the Lord and in his prophet Moses. 
See, that's what's happening in this season. God is showing you that you can trust Him. And if you've been walking with the Lord for any period of time, I know that God has done some of these things for you. That if you can look back on your life and look back through the seasons that God has brought you through, I know that you're going to see that He's fought for you, that He's given you guidance. I know that you'll recognize that He set up some planned encounters. I know that you'll recognize that, man, if the Lord didn't protect me, something bad and awful actually could have happened. And I know God has actually given you some victory over some things. And there's more. Amen. Let's keep going. Amen. Exodus 15, verse 22. This is what happens after they cross the Red Sea. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea. And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it in the waters, and the waters became sweet. There he made for them a statute and regulation, and there he tested them. Listen, one of the things that God does in this season is he tests you to see if you really want to be in covenant with him. He's actually wanting to know... It's not just a one-way thing. He wants to know, do you want to be my people? And engagement's a two-way thing. God is looking as... He, see, we have His heart. He's courting us. He wants to know, does He have your heart? Let me ask you today, does He have your heart fully? Or are you still looking back at Egypt? thinking you might die out here in this wilderness. God is looking to see, do you really trust me? And the Lord kept saying, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. See, God healed the water. God brings healing. There's supernatural provision and there's healing. And this is where we get the name Yahweh Rofika or Yahweh Rapha. The Lord who heals. This is where we actually get that name from in the Bible. This is where that one of the names of the Lord comes from. Yahweh who heals. God, your healer. God is telling Israel, you can trust me to keep your body healthy. And he's also saying, you can count on me. Because during this time, if you remember, as Israel traveled through the wilderness, their clothes didn't wear out. The Bible says that the sandals on their feet were still good. Even after 40 years, their clothes and their sandals did not wear out. How many of you guys got clothes that have lasted you for 40 years? I got some that are about 40 years old in my closet too, and, and my kids are now wearing them. <laughs> They're my grandparents, and now my kids are wearing them. They raid my closet all the time and take them. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for clothes that don't wear out. Anyways, the fact is, God provides for you. And He wants to take care of you. And we can count on Him to cover us when we stay in covenant with Him. Now someone says, well, I'm sick. Or I've been sick. That's okay, me too. Okay? We're in the world. But it doesn't mean that God is not a healer. Amen. It doesn't Amen. mean that God is not covering us, even in our sickness. Remember, even planned enemy encounters. The enemy did put Israel in slavery, but God did deliver them out of it. Amen. God does 
This promise is in the Bible. I just want to be so clear. God does want you to be healthy. Amen. Listen, John prayed it. I pray that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God wants us to live healthily. And don't get me wrong, we're going to go through seasons. Paul said, look, I've learned to be content when I lacked and when I had a lot, right? We have to go through different seasons in our lives, but God is faithful. And we need to trust in his word, not what we're experiencing. And we need to trust God to lead us in that way, okay? All right. One of the next things that happens is Israel begins to murmur against Moses and Aaron. Listen to this. The children of Israel said to Moses and Aaron, Would be to God that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For you brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Man, you know, when you enter out of one world and you enter into a new world, sometimes you're fearful of, is this new world going to work out? And you're like, i got to run back to the old world where it's comfortable. You know, where I had, where I had bread to eat to the full and flesh pots. You, you might have been in slavery there, but at least I had food. Here I am starving in the wilderness. God, are you going to take care of me? Or are you going to leave me to starve? So the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove whether they will walk in my law or not. So what happens? He says, I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Verse 12 now, Exodus 16. Speak unto them, saying, At evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. What happens? What is God saying? You shall know that I am the Lord your God. God is showing himself Faithful to those whom he's chosen. He's saying, yep, you can count on me to give you food, even in this wilderness. And that's what he did. He rained manna from heaven and he rained meat. He rained quail from heaven. And they ate every single day. Again, another test. Will you trust me? Will you trust me to provide for you? Let me tell you something. God wants us to trust him to provide. So I like this next little thing that happens in Exodus chapter 17 after God shows that he'll provide. He again leads them to a place where there's no water for the people to drink. And what does Israel do? See, like God just keeps testing sometimes till we pass the test. Isn't that the neat thing about God that he didn't just give up after the first time after they murmured? He could have gave up on Israel completely and just left them in the desert to die. And, so, and, and he could have just said, oh, I'm going to go figure this out with somebody else. No, God doesn't give up on us. That's the neat thing about God. He might test us again to see if we're ready, but he doesn't give up. So what happens is the people chided Moses. They said, give us some water. And Moses said unto them, why chide with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? So what happens is, is Moses smites a rock and water comes out of it. And here's what they said. Verse 7, Moses calls the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel. Why? Because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? I just want to ask, tell you some things. Do you remember Thomas in the New Testament? He was like, now, I'm not going to believe. We talked about this last week. I'm not going to believe until I get to put my hand in the side or put my hand in the hole in his hand. That's what Thomas said. And then Jesus showed up and said, hey, Thomas, go ahead. Do it. Go ahead. This is what God was doing here. God was saying, I hear you. Yep. Yeah, you're tempting me. Yeah, you're doubting. You're asking, is the Lord among us or not? Is he really here? Listen, that's what this season is all about, though. 
This season is all about God showing up, even in your doubts, to say, it's not about your doubt, it's about my faithfulness. Why? Because He wants to consummate the covenant with you. He wants you to be able to walk arm in arm and hand in hand with Him to lead you not just out of Egypt, but past the desert into the promise. Amen. The next thing and the final thing that happened before the promise came is Amalek came up against Israel to fight against them. And of course, this time, instead of God fighting for Israel, he sends Joshua and the army of Israel to go fight against Amalek. And how many of you know the story? Moses goes up on a mountain and he lifts up his hands before the Lord. That rod lifts it up before the Lord. And we know Joshua and Aaron held up his arms. Not Joshua. Joshua was fighting. <laughs> we know that they held up Moses' arms before the Lord so that he could keep his hands raised. And as long as his hands were raised before the Lord, Joshua and the armies of Israel had victory. And at the end of this, Moses builds an altar. And he calls the name of it Yahweh Nisi, the Lord our banner. Or also, the Lord is my refuge. Listen, sometimes God wants to show you in this season, he's like, yeah, okay, I'll do this for you completely. And he fought Egypt. But then sometimes he wants to show that he can fight with you. That you can fight with him. He's like, I'll let you do it, but I'm with you. And he was with them. God is showing himself faithful in this season. And if we'll look for it, we'll see that God has done the same thing in our lives. Listen, what's this season all about? It's to prepare Israel to enter into covenant with God. That's what this season is about. Passover to Pentecost is a time where God says, you can trust me. Why? Let's read it. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 2 through 3. You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years. That he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart. Let me ask you a question. Listen. What's in your heart today? Church. What's in your heart today? Are you fully walking arm in arm in covenant with God? Do you really trust him to provide for you? To fight for you? To fight with you? To cover you with his banner? To heal you? Whether you would keep his commandments or not, he humbled you. He let you be hungry. See what I'm saying? He let that happen to you. He let what you're going through happen to you. He fed you with manna so that you, that you didn't know that he might make you to understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds. Let's all stand to our feet, out of the mouth of the Lord. I like this better in Exodus 19, 4 through 6. This is what God did when they got to Sinai at Pentecost. Traditionally, at least. God speaks to Moses and he says, tell Tell this to the sons of Israel. He says, Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Let me ask you something. Have you seen God fight for you? 
Amen. Have you seen God supernaturally protect you? Amen. Supernaturally guide you? Yes. Has He proven Himself faithful in your life? Amen. You've seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you yes. on eagle's wings. Has He carried you yes. when you were hungry? Has He carried you when you were thirsty and you didn't know how you were going to make it? Yet He still provided. Yet He still lifted up His banner over you. He still said, no, I'm faithful. Even when you're grabbed even when you're grumbling, I'm still going to provide water out of this rock for you. I'm not going to let you starve. I'm not going to let you be hungry. I'm not going to let you be thirsty. I got you. You're my chosen one. And I'm going to cover you. So here's what he says. Here's what he says. Here's the response he's looking for from us. He says, you've seen it. Hmm. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be my own possession among all the peoples. See, God wants you. God wants to fully consummate what he began at Passover at Pentecost. That's why he's showing you that he's faithful. Because he wants to walk in covenant with you, arm in arm, hand in hand, up every mountain and down every valley. He doesn't just want to leave you in the wilderness. He wants to take you fully into everything that He's promised you and everything that He's destined with you. Listen, He wants you to be His possession in the earth. He says, look, you will be my own possession among the peoples for all the earth is mine. But you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. He wants a relationship with you unlike those that are not in covenant with Him. He wants to marry you. He wants to fully trust you and He wants you to fully trust Him. This is what it's been about since the beginning, church. It was broken through sin. And God wanted to bring His people back to Him into covenant. Yes. This is why God shows us that we can trust Him. It's not always by faith. Sometimes faith manifests the promise. Amen. This season is a harvest season. Hallelujah. This is a season where God wants to give you complete victory over your enemies. This is a season where God wants to heal your body. This is a season where God wants to provide for you. So go ahead and ask Him to. Don't grumble. Just know that He loves you. And He's shown Himself faithful to you before. And just go ahead and grab a hold of His arm and say, Come on, husband. Let's do this thing together. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to be in covenant with us. In the New Testament, Jesus appeared 40 days with convincing proofs and all of a sudden, instead of leading them into the promised land this time after the covenant, Jesus says, hey, I got some instructions for you. You're my people, and I want to be in covenant with you, but there's other people who don't know me, and I want to be in covenant with them. At this season of Pentecost, that's what it's all about. Jesus, right before Pentecost in this season, he called his disciples to the Galilee. They walked from Jerusalem all the way to the Galilee, climbed up on a mountain, and Jesus said and gave the Great Commission. He said, go therefore and preach this gospel to all the nations. Teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Listen, He doesn't just show Himself faithful to you just for your sake. It's so that you can tell others that He's faithful. Amen. Why? Because He wants to make them His possession as well. He wants to be engaged to them and prove Himself to them like He's proven Himself to you. If you've been walking with God... Let me ask you, are you following that, that direction from Jesus? Amen. Because that's what happens at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit comes and we receive power 
to walk in the covenant with God and to be his witness. Thanks for joining us today. We'd love to have you come join us in person. Service times are Sunday, 1030 a.m. and Friday at 7 p.m. We're at 5732 Douglas Road in Toledo, Ohio, on the corner of Alexis and Douglas. If you'd like to support our ministry, head over to www.lionofjudatoledo.org and click the donate button. Once again, we're so glad you joined us today. May you have a blessed day. See you soon.